you'll forgive me if I look a little wind blown because that's exactly what I am. Um, today was kind of hectic, lots of running around. It was one of those Fridays where Pat had some appointments and had to go out into the elements and, um, you know, which is nice. It's nice to get some fresh air. It really is. And um, it's a really nice climate here. And, you know, I was kind of wandering around outside the place where Pat was, you know, taking care of some business. And it was sprinkling and the clouds were all fluffy in the air and you could see, you know, little bits of blue sky behind and it was really beautiful. So, <laughs> that's what I'm blaming my hairstyle on. <laughs> so. I like to start things off usually with a little Karloff. Uh, you'll forgive me if, you know, I'm a little repetitive on that note, I hope. But, um, yeah, you know, I dig, I dig Boris. He's cool. And um, I'm going to start off tonight with uh, something of a comedy. Uh, I think this was uh, produced back in 1940 by uh, Columbia Pictures. And it was one of the, the, the last films that Karloff uh, appeared in before he started his, I think, three or four year run on Broadway in Arsenic and Old Lace which was written especially with him in mind, because if you've ever seen the movie or the play, I've seen both, and uh, it's very important, uh, the, the Boris Karloff element. And I'll say no more until maybe I review that movie. But tonight's movie will be the, the comedy on this double feature disc, The Boogeyman Will Get You. And Boris Karloff co-stars with Peter Lorre. And they're both very funny. Uh, you know, they were both very gifted uh, in, in the realm of uh, suspense and in comedy. Uh, but I have to say, Peter Lorre pretty much steals the movie. And he's, he's really a blast. Yes, I especially enjoy when Peter Lorre pulls the Siamese kitten out of the pocket of his long coat to witness the signing of any official documents. Very twisted. It's about uh, this eccentric group of people, whether they're a family or not, who knows, some of them may be blood relations, but they're all exceedingly strange, and they're living in this old... Uh, farmhouse um, from, you know, back before the revolutionary period or whatever. And uh, the, the movie is basically a, a farce about the goings-on in this place with all of these exceedingly odd characters. And uh, it, it's very funny, uh, and it's very well produced in that sort of uh, uh, vintage 1940s sort of style. Um, and it was based upon a stage play, I, ex I expect. I seem to remember having seen that in, in the credits. Um, I've pretty much seen all of these movies already, okay? Uh, the, the nice thing about them is that they're sort of hand-picked and collected over time, is they're movies that I don't mind at all seeing more than once. These, these be the cream of the crop. So... Anyway, that's, that's a very cool movie. And I was going to follow that up with something a little more serious, but a bit quirky in its own way. This is from the 1960s. Um, and it's called uh, Castle of Blood! You hate it when that happens? Jeez. Running gags. Uh, anyway, um, starring the great and wonderful and sexy Barbara Steele. Big Barbara Steele fan. Um, and uh, this is a, an interesting film in that it, uh, it belongs in the canon along with a lot of the other European horror films that Barbara Steele appeared in during the 1960s. Um, the thing that sets this one apart from some of the others um, would be that it was written especially for her um, apparently, the American production of um, 
The Pit and the Pendulum with Vincent Price, co-starring Barbara Steele, so wowed uh, elements, uh, uh, filmmaking elements in Europe, uh, style-wise and whatever else-wise, uh, that they, after having seen that film, had to acquire Barbara Steele and built this film around her. Uh, it's an interesting film because it's a... Um, I believe it's a an Italian French co-production. In any case, I believe it was produced in the in in the uh, in French, French language, um, and then dubbing was done for its American release. Well, when they did the you know the big restoration thing for the DVD, they found that there were some deleted scenes that hadn't appeared in the American version, but they hadn't been dubbed, so they put them in with subtitles where they would naturally have occurred. And it's kind of interesting. It's a little schizophrenic. You go back and forth between English audio and French audio reading the English subtitles, but you get used to it and it doesn't really happen that often. It's really more uh, a case of their trying to um, you know, restore the film in, it, in, in, in as close to its or original uh, state as possible, and I applaud them for all of their efforts. It's a cool movie. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid to say too much in case somebody wants to go out and rent it, but uh, um, it's very creepy in that sort of long plodding European sort of way. Uh, it moves rather slowly, but I don't mind that. One of the major questions in this film is Barbara Steele, is she or isn't she a ghost? Well, frankly, I don't care. Sell my clothes, I'm moving in. Yes, it's a film that's uh, steeped in atmosphere, which for me is as appealing as good writing or good acting. Of course, it's the writing and the acting along with the director that helps to create that atmosphere. And uh, to top it all off, something a little more somber. Uh, in my opinion, probably the finest ghost movie ever made, The Devil's Backbone. And this will require reading subtitles for the entire film, but I don't mind because this movie is so damn good. It's a little sad, okay? It's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not a feel-good horror movie, but uh, it's, a, it's a, a phenomenal creation by uh, the director uh, Guillermo del Toro, uh, who is uh, also famous for doing the Hellboy films and uh, that their stuff has mostly to do with um, the goings on in a um, an orphanage uh, and um, various uh, characters looming around uh, with. Um, evil intent, uh, trying to enrich themselves with the gold that's hidden inside. And, uh, of course, there's something else that's hidden inside, and uh, that would be something of a ghostly nature. It's a very spooky film. So, yeah, gosh. I just happened to find it. Uh, I, I, I saw it in a rental place, and it was sitting out of alphabetical order, where it shouldn't have been. But the cover caught my eye, and it looked, you know, I, I looked at it and said, that looks kind of spooky. I wonder what it is. And I didn't even know it was, you know, in Spanish with English subtitles. I just brought it home for a dollar for for a couple days. And by the time I'd finished watching it, then I had Pat come in watch it with me. Uh, and then by the time we were, we were done watching it together, we were firing up the computer, go to Amazon to buy our own copy. So, it's that good. So, that went by way too quickly, didn't it? But then uh, I've got to get to editing, and then I've got to get to watching these movies. So, uh, I'll be seeing you uh, later in the week. But I want to thank uh, all of you for watching, and I specifically want to thank, uh, you know, some of you who have been very welcoming and very generous with your comments and very encouraging. And... Uh, you know, I really appreciate that. You've you've made me feel like you know, it's um, 
it's okay to do this. And, and that's a big thing. So thanks a lot, and uh, I'll be seeing you later. Have a great weekend.